Hey guys, uh, I think we've all gotten used to, you know, just pressing a button on our phone and taking pictures that way, but I think we've kind of lost connection with the art of making our very own photos from scratch using just light. We're going to show you how to do that today. We're going to make a camera that uses no electricity at all. We're going to show you how to create your very own pictures. You don't even need a lens. So why does a camera actually need a lens? And what does a lens really do? Well, if we take a look here, we'll see that if light hits an object, it bounces off in all directions. You have these light rays pointing in all directions. And if we want to create an image of that object, we need to get those light rays all back to one point again, where we create our image. Now a lens will do that, because it bends the light rays and it points them back to the one location, and we can create our image there. So, okay, that makes sense, but then how are we able to make a camera without a lens? It's called a pinhole camera. We can make a tiny little hole with a pin, and this takes the place of our lens. Let's visualize it and see how. Okay, imagine a person standing in front of a wall. Let's imagine uh, some light bouncing off their face first, and then afterwards we'll think about it bouncing off their feet. So if some light bounces off their face, yeah, it's going to spread out in all directions. Some of the light rays will hit the top of the wall, some the middle, some the bottom of the wall. It'll all be spread out. Now imagine some light that bounced off his foot. Yeah, that's the same. It spreads out in all directions. So some of it's up at the top, at the bottom, at the side. So it's really just a jumbled up mess. And that's why when we look at the wall, we don't see an image. We just see a mixture of all of the different light. Now let's imagine putting our little pinhole screen in front of it. So now there's a big, there's a barrier in front of him. There's just a tiny pinhole in the middle. Now imagine those light rays that bounce off his face. Most of them get blocked by the barrier. Only one little light ray is able to make it through the little pinhole and it goes to a very exact location in the wall. Now imagine the light rays bouncing off his feet. The same thing happens. Most of them get blocked by the, by the screen, but one can make it through that tiny pinhole and it goes to the top. So we can see, we see a flipped image because if we can imagine every other point in his body, the same thing's going to happen. They're going to just, one light ray gets through, the, gets, gets through this little hole and we suddenly see this upside down image of a person on the wall. And that's how a pinhole camera is able to recreate an image just like a lens. So here is a pinhole camera that we created ourselves. And you can do it too at home. All you need is some sort of a box, yeah, like so. Uh, you need to make sure it's completely sealed from the light. You want to be able to open it at one end I use an old tea box because it already has this little flap on the top. Now you need to spray the inside black, yeah, it needs to be sprayed black so that there's no light bouncing around. And the most important thing is, on this end, you need to put your little pinhole. So you put a little pinhole in a little piece of metal because it makes a very clean hole to let the light through. And you can open it and close it. So we're ready to go, right? Well, there's one small drawback. Because the pinhole is so small, we only let a tiny amount of light through. Remember that? Only this one tiny little light, light ray comes from each point. So our image is going to be really dark. We need to have some sort of a way of amplifying it, of making that image brighter without using any electricity. And let me show you how we do that. We're going to use a special type of light sensitive paper, okay, to create our image. Now, this paper is coated with a chemical and when light hits it, a chemical reaction happens. So if we keep it in the back of our camera and we open our pinhole, yeah, well then light is going to start coming in. And if we leave the pinhole open for a long time, loads and loads of light rays all from the exact same point will hit the exact same part of the paper. So it will gradually build up a brighter and brighter and brighter image. Then we'll be able to take this paper into the dark room and we can develop it and we can see our final image. So let's go start taking pictures. Okay. So we're going to try and take a picture of our lovely science caravan here behind me. Uh, we'll try three different exposures and we'll see how they compare inside. So let's get set up before we lose the sunlight. Okay, so we're set up. We're at just about the right height. We're going to take a 15 second exposure. So I'm going to time it here and I'm going to carefully open the shutter and then don't touch it. We need it to be still. So let's count 15 seconds. So you have to be very careful when opening and closing it that you don't shake it too much. You want it to be perfectly still because if you shake it, it's going to get blurry. So let's go into the dark room and see what we can see here. And then we'll try the other two exposures. So we're in here in the dark room. It's safe to open the box now because these red lights won't damage the paper. The only light that should hit the paper is of the thing you want to take the picture of. 
So there's essentially a coded message put on this, but we can't uncode it until we put it into these special chemicals. Now you don't want to touch the paper with your hand because you can leave fingerprints on it. We take the paper, we put it in the developer. So we're slowly starting to see some sort of an image. We're waiting for the right time when it looks like we want it to look. But it could be that the exposure wasn't long enough, so we might not actually see anything of the caravan. If that's the case, we'll have to do it for longer. Okay, we couldn't see anything after 15 seconds, so we're going to try a really long exposure. We're going to try two minutes and we're going to see what happens. So let's open the shutter very carefully and wait for two minutes. All right, so we did a two minute exposure. Let's see if we can see anything with that. Oh, there it is. There's the caravan. There's all the lines of the detail on it. Wow, it's so great to just watch it appear here in front of you. Okay, now we're gonna try from a different angle. We're take, coming back a few steps and we're gonna try a minute and a half. All right, we're gonna take a photograph of these two caravans here. So let's open it up for a minute and a half. Okay, so we have a one and a half minute exposure of those two caravans. So let's see if we can see them. Let's drop it in to the developer. Give it a little swirl. You want that liquid to move around it. And then the developer should start to show us our image. Now what we're going to see is a negative. So bright things will be dark and dark things will be bright. Here it comes. We have the two caravans here. Now we can see it's flipped yeah. left to right because of the way the optical setup is. Okay, so we're going to try one more exposure of that scene with the two caravans, but we're tilting it down a little bit because we had too much sky in the previous one. So let's try three minutes this time. Okay, so before we put this picture into the developer, you might be wondering, why is it that the red lights are okay? Why are we able to use red lights but not other ones? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And number one, if you might remember from a previous video, uh, red light has less energy than blue light, which has the most energy. And then you have all the other ones in between. Think of the colors of the rainbow. The red is the low energy side. Also, the particular chemicals that are here, they're a lot more sensitive up in the blue region. Okay, they're not so sensitive to the red region. So that means these are the particular colors that we're able to use, and it doesn't really affect our, um, our pictures. So remember that, day-to-day -day photos will be taken in white light, which is all the colors. Now, let's get this one in and see how it looks. Okay, we're getting a lot more detail here. We can see the shape of the grass. We can see the top of the hedge. We can see the two caravans here. Oh, we're really seeing a lot more detail. When you can see that contrast, that change between different things, you know you're on the right track. All right, so now I want to turn this negative image, yeah, where bright things are dark and dark things are bright, into a positive image. So I can do that this clever way. I take another piece of photo paper that hasn't been exposed. So here we go, it's completely blank. I'm going to take my negative, okay. I'm going to flip it, I'm going to get it a little bit more wet. There we go, wash everything off it. To turn it upside down, on top of the unexposed paper. All right, get it making contact. So now what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna shine light through here and the light won't be able to get through where it's dark and will be able to get through where it's bright. So now I'm actually gonna turn on a light in here. I'm gonna use the light from my phone. It'll do just fine. So I'll go one, two, three. So now I have exposed the fresh piece of paper through the negative. So that's going to turn it into a positive. Let's put it in here to be developed and see what happens. So our positive image went to black way too quickly. We get too much light. So I'm going to try again, but with a really short exposure from the light on my phone. So let's see what appears this time. Hopefully we'll get our image, but it won't all go to black. Yes, here it comes. There's our image, you can see it. Okay, so we're gonna take a picture with our bigger pinhole camera. I'm gonna take a picture of Suavik where he's standing now holding the camera and we're gonna see what that looks like if it comes out. So we're gonna try one minute and 50 seconds because that's what we figured out should be the right exposure for this particular picture. So let's have a look. So here we have a selection of the lovely photos that we got to take with our very own pinhole cameras. Now, this is the first picture we took. 
it's of our lovely science caravan. Now the negative got a little bit damaged here with some chemicals, but you can see the positive that we took up here. So we make that nice little bit of detail here, but we kind of cut off the edges of it and it's a little bit dark and a little bit shady, so we tried another one. This is the next picture we took. We tried it from a bit more of a distance and we can see the sky and we can see two of the caravans here and you can see a lot more detail. We were really happy with how this one came out. So once we had got the hang of this, we decided to move on to our bigger pinhole camera because we wanted to use bigger paper to make bigger, sharper, clearer images. Now, here's one we took of one of the caravans from the side and you can really see that we're getting a lot more detail now and it looks like a, a lovely unique photograph that you couldn't really take any other way. It has a very definite style when you take a pinhole camera. Uh, you might remember this photo that I was taking of Swavik. So he was standing with his video camera filming me and I took this picture of him here. Now you might notice that he's quite blurry here but let's think about it. For these photographs you have to stay perfectly still for a long period of time because if you move then the light is going to start hitting a different part of the paper and that's what makes it blurry. So any movement will do that. But of course, it's not necessarily a flaw if you see that. You can create your pictures uh, very uniquely by moving around. You could dance around on the, on, on, uh, in front of here and you would see loads of versions of yourself that are all a little bit ghost-like. You can really be creative with a pinhole camera. And that brings us to our last image here. We're really happy with this one here. This is Swavik just leaning against the back of, the, of, of one of the caravans. And we can see he's a lot sharper here because he was able to stay more still in this location. So now we're starting to get pictures that are really crisp and clear. And the great thing about them is they're completely unique. We've created them on paper just using light bouncing against them, no electricity needed. And this is a unique piece of art that you'll get to keep forever. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that and you got a feeling for how cool it is to create your very own image from the light coming through the air using just a little cardboard box. Now, if you want to create this yourselves, you'll find a little link in the description that'll take you through all the steps. And we would love to see some of the images that you get to create yourselves at home. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one.